स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया In this lecture, we will be proving a theorem due to block, which is a prerequisite for proving the little Picard's theorem. Block's theorem tries to answer the following question: Suppose we have a domain omega, an open connected set omega, which contains the closure of the unit disk D, and consider the family of all those holomorphic functions f defined on omega, which satisfies f of zero is zero and f prime of zero is equal to one. The question is: uh, the question that we would like to answer is, what is the largest disk that can be fitted inside f of D for any f in uh, this family? So notice that the disk we demand should be independent of the uh, function that we pick from the family. We'll begin by proving a special case of the Bloch's theorem. Let me write down the proposition. We can call it a proposition. Let f be a function which is defined on the unit disk such that f of zero is equal to zero and f prime of zero is equal to one. Suppose we know that uh, absolute value of f of z is always bounded by some number, let's say m, for all z in the unit disk. Suppose we know that f is a bounded function, then the disk of uh, radius 1 by 6 m is contained in f of d. So if you notice that the left hand side here, there is uh, no reference to f. Irrespective of what f we pick which satisfies these conditions, the disk of radius 1 by 6 m is going to be contained in that. Let us give a proof of this statement. The proof is it is an elegant proof actually, we know that f of 0 is 0 and f prime of 0 is 1, so consider the power series expansion of f around 0. Of f around 0 and what do we then, f of z will be of the type f of z is equal to z plus higher order terms maybe a n z to the power n, n greater than or equal to 2. Notice that f of 0 is equal to 0 tells us that the constant term is 0 and f prime of 0 is equal to 1. Those are the conditions in the hypothesis. Both these conditions tell us f prime of 0 is equal to 1 tells us that the coefficient of z is equal to 1. And therefore, the absolute value of f of z, if you notice this is greater than or equal to z minus minus of this, which is absolute value of z minus the absolute value of summation a n z to the power n. Let us focus on the second term. If you look at a n, what is a n? By the Cauchy estimates, by Cauchy estimates, we can say something about a n. Cauchy's estimates tell us that the absolute value of a n is bounded to the, the uh, supremum of uh, z in the boundary of the disk of radius r of f of z by r to the power n. And this we know is bounded by m, right, because absolute value of f of z is less than or equal to m for all z in d, in particular on the disk, on the circle of radius r, this is also going to be bounded. And this is true for all uh, r less than 1. Remember that f is defined on the unit disk. So, in the in the uh, in a smaller disk d 0 r where r is less than 1, we can talk about the Cauchy estimates and we have this. Now, by taking the limit as r goes to 1, taking limit as r goes to 1 from values less than in, 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 uh, in from the left rather, if you take this limit, we have absolute value of mod a n is less than or equal to capital F. So, this is what we get to conclude by the Cauchy estimates when we consider the coefficients and therefore, what we have is the following summation. The absolute value of summation a n z to the power n is less than or equal to uh, m times summation mod z to the power n. 
And therefore, let's get back to the the inequality we are uh, in, interested in. Mod f of z is greater than or equal to mod z minus this, which tells us that hence mod f of z is greater than or equal to mod z minus m times uh, this is basically mod z square times 1 by 1 minus mod z. So the first observation is that our number m has to be necessarily greater than or equal to 1. Since uh, uh, mod f if, if m is less than or equal to 1, in fact if m is less than 1, let us end up with some contradiction, then uh, f will be a map from d to itself with f of 0 is equal to 0 and f prime of 0 is equal to 1 and the Schwarz's lemma tells us that f of z is equal to lambda times z. Now for some z between, so for z such that m is less than mod z less than 1, absolute value of f of z is just going to be equal to absolute value of, for this is with mod lambda equal to 1, right, it is a rotation. So here this is just going to be equal to mod z which is greater than m, which is a contradiction. And therefore, we cannot have m to be less than 1, therefore m has to be greater than or equal to 1. That is an observation that we uh, should keep in mind because if now we consider 1 by 4m, that is a number which is between 0 and 1 and if you consider for mod z is equal to 1 by 4 m. Let us see what happens here. What will happen to the right hand side? Mod z minus m mod z square times 1 minus mod z is going to be uh, 1 by 4 m minus m by 16 m square which is going to be 1 by 16 m by 1 by 4 m 1 minus 1 by 4 m this is precisely what it is going to be this is going to be 1 by 4 m minus 1 by 12 m and again by computing this this is going to be 3 minus 1 which is 2 by 12 m which is equal to 1 by 6 m. That is that's what we get for considering on the circle of radius 1 by 4 m. Hence, absolute value of f of z is uh, greater than or equal to 1 by 6 m on, 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 on the circle z such that mod z is equal to 1 by 4 m. Now, let us consider the uh, disk of radius 1 by 6 m and pick some point there. W be a point in the disk of radius 1 by 6 m. Then absolute value of W which is less than 1 by 6 m, this is in particular less than or equal to the absolute value of f of z on the uh, circle of radius 1 by 4 m. Now by uh, by Roche's theorem, by Roche's theorem, if g of z is equal to identically equal to minus w, then f plus g, which is f of z minus w and f of z have the same number of zeros counter to multiplicity in the disk of radius 1 by 4 m. That is precisely what our Roche's theorem will tell us and because of that this tells us that there exists z in d 0 1 by 4 m such that f of z is equal to w and since w was picked arbitrarily it tells us that d 0 1 by 6 m. Notice that that is what the w was from that is the disk where our w was from. So, d 0 1 by 6 m is contained in f of the disk of radius 1 by 4 which is in particular contained in f of t. 
and that is precisely what we had set out to do. Let us now generalize this result to a uh, uh, bit higher generality by uh, stating and proving the following proposition. We will now not consider uh, functions from a unit disk, rather let us consider f from a disk of uh, radius r around 0, the holomorphic which is bounded, bounded such that bounded by m let us say, holomorphic function such that okay f of 0 is 0 the absolute value of f prime of 0 now is not necessarily equal to 1 but rather some positive number and such that absolute value of f of z is less than or equal to m for all z in d0 r. Then for this family of functions we can say that the disk of the radius r square mu square by 6 m is contained in the uh, image of f, image of d0r under f. We have done the uh, hard work in the previous proposition, the proof here is going to be easy, we are going to reduce this problem to the problem in above and in order to do that, uh, consider the following map. The current map is from d0r to d0 say m and we will first reduce it to a map from d0 1 into d0 m by composing it with say psi uh, 1 which is basically z going to r times z. So consider g of z which is defined by f composed with psi 1 of z where psi 1 of z is just r times z and what happens to the derivative here f prime at uh, g prime at 0 that is going to be equal to f prime at 0 which is mu times psi 1 prime at 0 which is r. So, this is going to be r mu. So, let us now compose it with a psi 2 post composition which will send it to uh, the following. We would like to have the uh, derivative to be equal to 1. So, g psi 2 of z should be equal to z by r times mu. Observe that both r and mu are positive. So, this makes sense. So, this is just going to go into d0 m by r. This is precisely what we are ending up with, with a psi 2 here. Now notice that g of 0 is 0, g prime of 0 is equal to 1. You should sit down and check this. It has been arranged so that g prime of 0 is equal to 1 and mod g of z is less than or equal to uh, m by r times mu for z in d 0 1. Now we are in the uh, setup as earlier. This tells us that the disk of radius 1 by 6 m which is going to be r mu by 6 m this is going to be contained in g of the unit disk and that is going to translate into what we want. I will leave it as an exercise to check that then d 0 r square mu square by 6 m is contained in f of d 0 r. Notice that if you translate whatever we have concluded here for g by using the uh, definition of g and f here, then we will be able to conclude uh, what we wanted to conclude in the exercise and that will complete our result. Alright, let us now prove the Bloch's theorem which is in slightly more generality. This setup is the following, let me write it down. Let omega be some uh, domain, some open connected set in C which contains the closure of the unit disk. 
an open connected set in subset of C such that D bar is contained in omega. It's an open set. So let me put the containment to be a strict open set. And suppose f is some function from omega to c such that f of 0 is equal to 0 and f prime of 0 is equal to 1. Then the conclusion tells us that there exists a disk. Let us call that disk something, let us call the disk D1 uh, contained in D such that F restricted to D1 is injective and further if you look at F of D1, it contains the disk of radius 1 by 72 in its image, which in particular is contained in F of D. Notice that 1 by 72 is an absolute constant here, which does not depend on F. So, for any function F, which is defined in this manner, we will be able to prove that the disk of radius 1 by 72 is sitting inside f of d. Okay, let us now give a proof of Bloch's theorem. The proof is going to be in steps. Let us begin by defining an auxiliary function. Define m of maybe r to be equal to the supremum of absolute value of f prime of z when mod z is equal to r. Basically, it is the supremum of f, absolute value of f prime rather on the circle of radius r. The Then, uh, one more function let us define h of r to be defined as 1 minus r times m of r. So, the first observation for you would be that m of r is indeed a continuous function, is continuous on 0 1 I am only interested in 0 1 so let us focus on 0 1 we will not bother about what happens outside on 0 1 m of r is a continuous function this follows because f prime on the closure of the unit disk which is compact is going to be uniformly continuous use the uniform continuity of f prime on the closure of the unit disk to prove in, prove that m of r is also a continuous function and if you now look at h h is also going to be a continuous function hence h what is h? h is m of r times 1 minus r. h is continuous on 0 1. Let us observe a few things. What is h of 0? h of 0 is 1 times m of 0. m of 0 is mod f prime of 0 which is equal to 1. And h of 1 is just equal to 0. So, by continuity there is a neighborhood of 0 where it is neighborhood of 1 where it is strictly less than 1. Let us pick R naught to be the supremum over all R such that H of R is equal to 1. Can happen that H of R takes 1 multiple times, but we can pick the supremum over all such values R naught and H of R naught in particular should be equal to 1 by continuity of H. Also you can check by the intermediate value theorem that H of R will be strictly less than 1 for r greater than r naught. Yeah, that is something which you should sit and sit and check. I told you why it will be the case. Let us now focus on m of r naught. What was m of r naught? Recall that m of r naught is just the supremum of the absolute value of f prime of z where we range this over the circle of radius r naught. Now, if you look at m of r naught, uh, if you look at the circle of radius r naught, that is a compact set and f prime being a continuous function attains its maximum at z some point. Let us call it z naught. Let z naught uh, be such that mod z naught is equal to r naught and f prime of z naught is equal to m of r naught because we pick one such point. We also know that h of r naught is equal to 1. Remember that h of r naught 
is equal to 1 which tells us that 1 minus r naught times the absolute value is equal to 1 which tells us that f prime of z naught this is equal to 1 by 1 minus r naught. Now consider the following disc let rho be equal to half of 1 minus r naught and consider the disc of radius rho around z naught. Let me draw a picture to capture what we have just done. So this is the unit circle. We have maybe I should use colors. Uh, red is the circle of radius r naught. There is the point z naught lay say lying here, and then we have the green circle capturing the disk of radius rho around z naught, and the pink is going to be the circle which captures everything or the disk in which everything is sitting. So, let us see what happens. Let us pick some point z here. Let z be some point in d z 0 rho. So, remember that this distance is rho, this distance is r naught and this distance is going to be equal to r naught plus rho. And you can check that uh, absolute value of z is less than or equal to absolute value of z naught plus absolute value of z minus z naught which is r naught plus rho which is r naught plus half of 1 minus r naught which is equal to half of 1 plus r naught which is less than 1 because r naught is uh, less than 1. So, in particular 1 plus r naught by 2 is greater than r naught and this tells us that h of uh, half of 1 plus r naught this is less than 1 that is precisely what uh, our r naught was picked to be. Why was, why is this the case? This is because half of 1 plus r naught is greater than so 1 is greater than this which is greater than r naught. So, this is precisely the reason why we have written whatever we have written. And what is this? This is basically telling us that 1 is greater than uh, 1 minus half of 1 plus r naught times m of half of 1 plus r naught. And if we look at this, this tells us that m of half of 1 plus r naught, this is less than 1 by 1 minus uh, r naught times 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 by rho. If you notice that is precisely how we had picked rho. So, rho was not picked arbitrarily if you think about it. So, this is true for all points on the uh, circle which is captured by the pink, pink line here, pink curve here. Basically, the circle of radius r naught plus rho. And by the maximum modulus principle, we have that absolute value of f of z prime. So, this is the supremum, right? By maximum modulus, the absolute value of f prime of z is less than 1 by rho for z in d z0 rho. Let us now consider the following function. Define g of z to be equal to f prime of z minus f prime of z naught. And if we on on d z 0 rho. Then if we uh, look at the absolute value of g of z, that is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of f prime of z plus the absolute value of f prime of z naught. We know that the absolute value of f prime of z is strictly less than 1 by rho and we know that the absolute value of f prime of z naught is equal to 1, 1 by 2 rho and this is just 1 by 2 plus 1 basically 3 by 2 rho. So, what we have now is that from the disk of radius rho around g we have a map rho around z naught we have a map g into the disk of radius 3 by 2 rho. Let us compose it with two functions which sends it to 
the unit disk the map here will be z going to let's call it psi 2 and the map here psi 1 uh, where psi 1 of z this is going to be equal to z0 plus rho times z and psi 2 of z is equal to 2 rho by 3 times z. So, if you consider these two maps, we have a composition of holomorphic maps h of z defined to be psi 2 composed with g composed with psi 1 now is a map from d to d which maps 0 to 0 and by Schwarz lemma we have the absolute value of psi 2 is basically 2 rho by 3 times g of psi 1 of z which let me compose by the inverse to get the absolute value of psi 1 inverse of z which let me write it as psi 1 inverse will just be equal to z minus z0 by rho this is precisely what we have and therefore the absolute value of g of z is going to be less than or equal to 3 by 2 rho square times the absolute value of z minus z naught. So we are good now because g of z and one more observation will be that this is going to be a strict inequality because there is a strict inequality here. This strict inequality will tell us that uh, the Schwarz's lemma here cannot be an equality, it has to be a strict inequality. So let us now consider the following disk, define our D1 which is our goal. The goal was to get hold of a disk D1 where our function f is uh, 1 to 1 and whose image contains the disk of radius 1 by 72. We will come to the 1 by 72 part later, let us first show that f is indeed injective on the disk which is given by dz0 um, rho by 3 and if you observe on this on d1 let z1 and z2 be two points then by the fundamental theorem of calculus f of z2 minus f of z1 is just going to be equal to the integral of f prime of z dz over gamma z1 to z2 the straight line part so the absolute value will be like this now that is going to be greater than or equal to the triangle inequality again which is captured in the following manner z0 dz absolute value minus the absolute value of the integral of f prime of z0 minus f prime of z uh, dz gamma z1 to z2 this is gamma z1 to z2 the first one is just uh, f prime of z0 times z1 minus z2 minus the absolute value here will be let me just put it this way and let's focus on that absolute value since z1 and z2 are in d1 the distance of the line segment joining z1 to z2 is also in d1 and therefore if you look at f prime of z0 minus the f prime of z if you look, look at this absolute value by Schwarz's lemma we just notice that g of z is basically f prime of z minus f prime of z0 and that is less than strictly less than 3 by 2 2 rho square times the absolute value of z0 minus z and that is less than rho by 3. So, this is going to be strictly less than 1 by 2 rho, but that is precisely equal to the absolute value of f prime at z0, that is the choice, right. So, we have done all the choices uh, so that it fits perfectly when it, when it is needed. So, we will get back to this inequality inequality here tells us that this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of integral of f prime of z0 dz which I have already captured in the form of mod of f prime of z0 times z1 minus z0 and because of the strictness of the inequality let me replace it by a strict inequality here minus f prime of z0 times mod of z1 minus 
z0 which in particular is greater than 0. So what did we start off with? We started off with f of z2 minus z1. We showed that the absolute value has to be greater than 0 which tells us that f is injective on d1 and that is one of the uh, conclusions of Bloch's theorem. We observed that f restricted to d1 is injective. The only thing now left to prove is that this function f uh, indeed has the disk of, it satisfies the condition that the disk of radius 1 by 72 around 0 is sitting inside f of d1. In order to prove that uh, f of d1 contains the disk of radius 71, let us now again define another auxiliary function. This is a new g that I will use, I do not want to use too many notations. Define g of z to be equal to uh, f of z plus z0 minus f of z0. Uh, where is this defined? This is defined on d0 rho by 3. Remember that d1 is dz0 rho by 3. This is on d0 rho by 3. So, this does make uh, sense and uh, the first observation would be the following. Let us now make a few observations about g. g of 0 is equal to 0 g prime at 0 is uh, the same as f prime at z0 which is equal to 1 by 2 rho. You should go up and check that uh, the z0 was picked very crucially in this manner. And moreover, what do we know about uh, absolute value of g of z for z for z in d0 rho by 3? The first observation would be that uh, z the, the curve gamma of z0 to z0 plus z. This is sitting inside d1, right? Then by the fundamental theorem of calculus f of z plus z0 minus f of z0. This is going to be equal to the integral of f prime of z over this curve. dz. And if you look at the absolute value, this is bounded here. So we check that the absolute value of f prime of z is bounded by 1 by rho. So this is less than 1 by rho times the absolute value of z, which is now in the disk of uh, radius rho by 3 around 0. So this is in particular less than rho by 3, which is hence less than 1 by 3. So what have we shown here? We just showed that this is absolute value of g of z. So we are now in the setup of our previous problem, hence g is now a map from disk to c g of 0 is equal to 0, g prime of 0 was already computed to be 1 by 2 rho, 1 by 2 times rho and the absolute value of g of z is less than 1 by 3 for z in d. Let us now go up to the previous theorem. What does the previous theorem tell us? The previous theorem then tells us that d0 r square mu square by 6m. This is contained in d0 r. Yeah, so, this, this is a slow, slight mistake. This is from d0 rho by 3. Right. So, this tells us that uh, d0 what is r square here? Rho by 3 the whole, whole square, r square mu square, mu square is 1 by 2 rho the whole square by 6 times 1 by 3. This is precisely what we are interested in. This is uh, contained in g of d0 rho by 3, right. Let us just go back and see what was the conclusion previously made. The conclusion was that d r square mu square by 6 m is contained in f of d 0 r. Let us now go back to where we are. This is just going to be equal to r square rho square by 3 square into 2 square rho square that is the numerator by 6 times 1 by 3 which is 2. This is just going to be equal to 1 by uh, 9 into 8 which is 72 and that is precisely where we are ending up with. So, it is actually tailor made I should 
confess that there is some reverse engineering that was involved. This tells us that D01 by 72 is contained in G of D0 rho by T. And now translating it back, this tells us that D01 by 72, this is contained in F of D1, which is precisely what we had set out to prove, thereby getting block square up. 